what we came here for this evening is to begin hitting the ground, uh, working, organizing, networking, and we wanted to give you uh, an opportunity to get to know some of these candidates who have announced and are putting their committees together. So without any other delay, I would like to invite our first uh, candidate this evening for governor, Kathleen Falk. <laughs> We're going to let her say a few words and take a few questions. We'll ask that she repeat the questions for the floor so that those people listening uh, in on by internet can hear that. We'll go to about 22 and about uh, tw uh, 10 after 8 with uh, Kathleen Weinhout, and then we will go to Douglas McLeod. Thank you. Thank you. It is wonderful to be here this evening, uh, and I especially am pleased that, to see my old friend Paul Demain. I too had the pleasure of meeting him first when he worked uh, with uh, Governor Earl in his administration, and I especially remember him teaching me a whole lot about the Indian nation sovereignty. Those are lessons I have not forgotten and I wholly respect. And I also appreciated what he taught about environmental stewardship and leadership, so I have been a Paul Domain fan for a long time. Thank you, Paul. Uh, it's also great to be in this wonderful facility and to also have listened to the speakers before me, uh, leaders uh, in the Indian nation and the message that they carry statewide always is heard and respected. Um, I'm very pleased to be here with uh, your fabulous new state assembly person, Janet Dooley. She's doing a terrific job. And you know, when I think of those Milwaukee Tea Party folks, who think they're gonna travel up and try to unseat Senator Bob Joe. You know we're gonna have his back because he always has yours, right? We're not gonna have that. <laughs> and I wanna thank you all for what you have done this past year. You know, we were all surprised, right? We got a governor who isn't the person people thought they were electing. And you immediately rose up and said, not under our watch, is this surprise, extreme, far-right agenda, what Wisconsin wants, and what are our values. And so I have seen your faces, and I have seen your voices. John Smart is one of the most articulate spokesperson who is constantly on public radio and in many other forums on our and your behalf speaking about what is wrong with Governor Walker's agenda and how we are going to unseat him in a few months. So thank you all for all you did to get those million signatures and to keep speaking up because this is our democracy and we are gonna get back our state in two short months. Now as I have worked this whole past year, uh, to fight against Governor Walker's agenda. Um, I have heard citizens in every part of the state say the same thing. We are united. It makes no difference if you're in a schooner or Kenosha. It doesn't make any difference. We have the same shared values. And what people tell me first is, Governor Walker was not honest with our voters, right? He did not tell us when he was campaigning that he would make the biggest cut in public education in our state's history, did he? He didn't tell us that he was going to try to throw 65,000 men, women, and children off their health care, did he? He didn't tell us that he would be uh, working with his Republican allies in the legislature to do one of the most extreme voter ID laws that will make it harder for 175,000 seniors to exercise their right to vote, did he? He didn't say he'd throw out 50 years of workers' rights that have worked well in this state under Republican governors and Democratic governors and helped build the middle class in our state. He didn't tell us that, did he? Well, him not being straight with us voters is, I think, singularly the biggest reason why people are going to recall Governor Walker in two short months. <laughs> But 
then he's also, he does not have our values. You know, I, I'm born in Milwaukee and grew up in rural Waukesha County. At the same time as many here, it's I hunt, I fish, that's how I learn my love of the outdoors. And I know from my work that I'll describe in just a moment, we have these shared values in Wisconsin. Again, no matter what part of the state we live in. We want a good education for our kids. We want some decent health care when we need it. We want a good paying job so we can take care of our families. And we want some natural resources to play in so when we're not working, we can play with our families. We don't ask for too much. And Governor Walker has assaulted, has affronted, has harmed every one of our core values. You know, he started out with making big tax breaks for a handful of corporations and then the largest cut in public education in our state system. Not our values. He's throwing off 65,000 men, women, and children from their health care is what he wanted to do. That wasn't our values. He's trying to roll back these environmental laws, and I thank goodness Senator Jalvin and Representative Dooley have stood up and said, not under our watch, but he had more votes on his side. And on his most important signature commitment to the people of Wisconsin. He said he would produce a quarter of a million jobs over the next four years. And we now know that his, his report card is in and he has failed. Sadly, sadly, under his agenda, Wisconsin ranks dead last, meaning we lost more jobs than any other state in the nation. He told us if we st stuck with him last spring, that his big tax breaks for corporations will trickle down to us. Is anybody feeling the water? <laughs> no, sadly, sadly and tragically, just the opposite. Because we know that the only way to produce jobs and grow our economy is the only way that has ever worked. And that's to invest in human capital. And how do we do that? We invest in education. And not just K through 12, but that's where we start, but also through our fabulous technical college system and our university system. When I was here campaigning about a month ago in Ashland, it was actually winter then, remember? <laughs> it was a bitter cold Saturday morning and we walked into the Black uh, Cat Cafe and it was 13 below that morning. And there was a, the, the cafe was crowded and people were eager to talk about how we're gonna unelect Scott Walker. And a young man comes up to me and he says, I, I drove over from Superior. I'm from Brule, he said, but I'm a student at UW-Superior and I wanna be a teacher. And he said, I'm in a classroom of others who wanna be teachers. And in this talk, he says, I, got, I, came, I drove over here to tell you that about a dozen of my classmates have dropped out from wanting to be teachers. Now as a mom, as a citizen of this state, what could be sadder than to hear we're losing another generation of educators for our kids. Scott Walker's not on our side. He's not fighting for us. He doesn't share our values, and that's why in two short months, we will elect Scott Walker our governor. <laughs> you know, when he got, Scott Walker got his agenda through, and he kept saying if we stuck with him, the jobs would appear, and report month after month after month showed those job losses and he finally had this acknowledge, right, that his way wasn't working given six straight months of job losses. What do you do when you, you, get, when you don't have an answer to a question? You gotta change the question. So he changed the topic. And what we've seen over the last couple months that Senator Jelf and Representative Buley have had to fight back on our behalfs is now this assault on our social values, the, social, the conservative social agenda. I mean, just look what happened in the last month or so alone. It used to be, thanks to the work of our legislature and prior governor, that that man and woman sitting right in the front row there, doing the same job at the workplace, he making a dollar, she making 81 cents to the dollar, doing the same job. Well, until a couple weeks ago, she had a right to do something about it. But the Republican legislature passed a bill that said you can't. That bill's on Governor Walker's desk. I've urged him to veto it. And then just a few weeks ago, 
when you think we ought to be working on producing jobs for our state that is so sorely needed, what were the Republicans in the legislature working on? Well, let's go back to teaching abstinence in our classrooms. That's always worked, hasn't it? <laughs> so the far, the war we have seen on women at the national level is the war that Governor Walker has taken on with a vengeance here in Wisconsin. And that isn't our values. And that is why in two short months, we are going to elect a new governor. We know here you can have better. We know there's a better way. And I've spent my lifetime fighting for a better way. And I'm here to ask for your support to put me on a job working for you. When I was born, I was a granddaughter of a bus driver in Milwaukee. I learned early on from my grandfather that his generation worked to organize to get the rights to bargain so that I could have a better life. I didn't forget that at any moment of time. We have a middle class because people before us fought for the right to bargain. We have a 40-day work week. We have a fair day for a fair day's work because the generation before us fought hard. Not on our watch are we going to let 50 years of workers' rights go down the drain in Wisconsin, are we? Not on our watch. <laughs> Later on, we moved out to what was rural Waukesha County. Like I said, that's where I learned my love of the outdoors and why I hunt and fish. I have a passion for the outdoors. When I was eight years old, and this was in 1959, I'm afraid, I started a conservation club. Kids weren't doing that back then, much less girls. But I started a conservation club when I was eight years old. So it was no surprise that when I became of age, I started out at the University of Wisconsin in Waukesha, my hometown. Couldn't afford to go away to school. But I, want, I knew I wanted to do something to change the world because what was going on then? Vietnam War, Watergate, civil rights, women's rights, the very first Earth Day. And I loved my country and I was so frustrated by the decisions that was being made. And so I knew a seventh, seventh grade civics class teacher had said, if you want to change the world, one of those ways is to go to law school. So I went to law school and started out uh, working for a group called Wisconsin's Environmental Decade, arguing cases in the state three, Supreme Court three months out of law school, taking on big and powerful institutions and winning, and making $35 a week. <laughs> I loved it. And one day the public inter the, the, the attorney general called and said, Kathleen, why don't you come over and be a public intervener? One of those two environmental watchdogs that Governor Nobles had created decades and decades earlier. And I spent the next 12 years as your public intervener, helping citizens all across the state protect their favorite and most important corners of the world. One of the gentlemen that, that's here tonight came up to me and said, remember when you were in Manitowoc County helping us on that highway fight? I do, I do. And so I've seen our shared values all across the state. But one of the results of our work in, in protecting the environment in the public intervener's office is we were, we were pretty darn successful, you might remember. And what was the reward for that for you? Governor Thompson abolished the office, cut off the head of the public intervener office, that office that was, had served citizens so well. I was an assistant attorney general then, and that's when people in Dane County said, hey, Paul, you ought to run for county executive because we've got 2,500 farms and a whole lot of lakes and streams, and with 60,000 new people coming a decade, we need an environmental champion to make sure we grow in a way that doesn't destroy our natural resources. And that's a good reason to run for office, but there was another. In my private life, I'm the mom of a, the light of my life, who's now 31 years old, my son. And he grew up in a neighborhood where unlike him and me, a lot of kids had nothing. And over time, I grew so frustrated with my, my inability to make a permanent difference in their lives. And this was right at the time when President Clinton was saying to the states, you gotta reform a welfare system. And Governor Thompson's saying, well, we'll be the first to do it, remember that? But by the way, it's actually counties that do it. I thought, well, maybe that is what I'm supposed to do. They ran in a crowded field of men, first woman elected, and then served a historic length of time, second longest serving county executive in our state's history. I love doing it. Because what I love doing is I love solving problems. And so for 14 years, I not only balanced a budget year in and year out, and I love balancing budgets, because it's where you show your values. And it made me have to reinvent government day after day after day until I could do more 
to serve this growing population and do it in a smarter way. And I have not only had, because of that work I have done there, reformed the criminal justice system so it's smarter on crime, and I did that by working with Republican sheriffs and Republican district attorneys, but I took on those big development issues that had pitted us environmentalists against the builders, brought people together. So for 14 years then, we were able, by working together, have the first, best, or only natural resources protections in the state by working together. That's what I love doing. And that's why I'm eager to bring those skills, day one, ready to go, as your governor in two short months. For example, let me just give you one example here, but please check out my website, KathleenFalk.com. You know, one of the big tax breaks that Governor Walker did last spring for these big corporations alone cost us about $40 million. Well, the cuts that he made to the technical college system, this is the technical college system that one out of five high school graduates goes to to get skills for the rest of their lives. It's 100 years old, our technical college system. It just celebrated its 100th anniversary. And at a time where right now there's about 35,000 job openings in Wisconsin, welders, nurses of all kinds, well, where do they get their training? The technical college system. So at a time when you have jobs that employers need to find workers for, and we need workers to get good paying jobs, the very last thing you should do is cut that technical college system but he cut it by $36 million a year. So if you undo just that one of those tax breaks, you can completely restore the funding for our important technical college systems. That's the difference, and that's what I'm eager to do for you in two short months. <laughs> now, I follow the rules. Paul's a, Paul's a tight rule uh, enforcer here. So as I close here and, and turn this over to your questions, you know, what we need too is to send our strongest warrior, our strongest warrior in two months against Scott Walker. I'm here to ask for your support to be that warrior. I have put together a fabulous campaign. My campaign manager is Megan Mahaffey. She's the one that ran the whole recall effort statewide. She's fabulous. But I'm also so very honored that I have earned the endorsement of every single organization that has endorsed on the Democratic side. I'm proud to earn the support of teachers statewide through REACT, of AFSCME statewide through all the local and state government uh, AFSCME workers, your statewide food and commercial workers, the American Federation of Teachers statewide, um, Emily's List with its uh, million members nationwide, Clean Wisconsin Action Fund. I'm very honored to earn the support of all these organizations, the Big Ten, that we gotta to put together in order to beat Scott Walker, but I'm here to ask your support. I know that you know I will work as hard as I possibly can as I have been this last year for us together, united to beat Scott Walker, but then I will work even harder to keep your trust. And that's what I promise you. So please uh, go to my website for more details on, on the issues that I'm raising and the solutions that I'm offering. And I'm very grateful for this, your time in coming here tonight and look forward to your questions and comments now for my last few minutes. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> Paul said two questions. Ooh, this, is a this is not a shy group, but yes, sir. I do, 
I do want to say too, just to, to, in fairness, I always want to make sure people know there's, there's a wonderful young man uh, who follows me a lot from the Republican Party. So I just wanted you to be aware in case there's a question or comment that you, you are on tape and I wanted to make sure that you are aware of that. He's a nice man, but I wanted to make sure you know you'll be recorded. One more question? Yes, sir. Yes, I have a numerous, and let me start with the philosophical one, uh, and which is what my opposition to what Governor Walker did and then what I would do. Again, his theory of how you create jobs and employment is this big tax breaks for a few, hoping it trickles down to the rest of us. And when in our country has that ever worked? And, and we've seen here in Wisconsin that it did because the last six months of 2011, we had job losses all six months in a row, the worst record of any state in the nation. So even if the, he, you had agreed with him in theory, we have now seen that his way did not work. And my way of, of investing and building and creating jobs is by investing in education. That is what has always worked. And why I gave the example I did of how you can immediately, as well as long-term, do that investment. You change just that one combined reporting tax break, and that would fully fund the restoration of the technical college system. But there are other ways, too, and I can give some more examples that I'm so excited about, and what a governor ought to be doing. And I'll give you two. One of the things we know in Wisconsin is that we need venture capital so when the smart scientists and inventors, like people in this room, have a great idea, you can get some capital to be able to make money off of your idea and manufacture equipment, et cetera. Both parties agree that we need a venture capital bill. Governor Walker said, well, if you give me one, I'll sign it. Well, that's not leadership. Instead, he should have had people in a room saying, we're not gonna leave here. Both parties want a venture bill. We're not gonna leave until we have an agreement. That's what a leader would do. But what I'm excited about helps all parts of the state. We have. The, we have things here in Wisconsin that no other state has. We have the Northwoods, with its incredible pulp. We sit on the Great Lakes, the only fresh, largest freshwater body on the planet. And we have the best scientists uh, doing stem cell research and biotechnology and life-saving research that helps the world. No other state can lay claim to those three things like we can. So we need a governor who's not only investing in the institutions, the universities, that train and educate these great scientists, but then we've got to be the cheerleaders and we've got to match uh, this science with what the rest of the world wants so that the, the wood biomass from the Northwoods that's now producing cellulose energy, green energy, we can market that across the world. So that the scientists in the University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee at, on the, the Center for Freshwater Studies we can manufacture the equipment that other countries need to, for, to clean up their water pollution problems so that we can produce the cancer technology that the University of Wisconsin and Madison scientists are producing for us. We need a governor who will now market what we uniquely have here to the world instead of a governor who spends more time in Texas collecting campaign checks from billionaires or Florida or New York from millionaires. He's been missing in action. He's been so busy camping collecting campaign checks, he hasn't been working on jobs here in our state, and I'm eager to 